the uh, electromagnetic spectrum uh, here for various applications. So I'm going to show Okay, can you see this colorful screen? Can you? All right. So this colorful screen is actually showing you the um the radio spectrum allocation in Malaysia, I got it from the MCMC website. And what, what is MCMC? MCMC stands for Malaysia Communication and Multimedia Commission. I think this, this organization now is very getting more and more known because of uh, uh, a lot of internet issue. Okay, so this is how the uh, MCMC actually allocate the uh, bandwidth in uh, the radio spectrum uh, for Malaysia use. So uh, again, on the left side, you can see a uh, different color meaning for different application. So uh, what we're interested in basically will be for mobile, all right, mobile communication. I think that's the one that you're more interested in. And uh, also I will show you the uh, AM and FM because we're going to study AM and FM. So as far as Malaysia is concerned, all right, the M is here. The entire spectrum, okay. Let's look at the entire spectrum. So, the entire uh, radio spectrum, like from zero hertz all the way up to um, whatever is in use in Malaysia now, is up to uh, 30 gigahertz and all the way to 420 terahertz. All right, so uh, we are actually they are all for various applications. If you're interested, you can always uh, go and uh, go to the website and then take a look in details. Okay, for AM is here, right? Um, AM is amplitude modulation. Uh, it's used to transmit radio. All right. Um, so the range or the bandwidth is some is between uh, five three five to uh, one six zero six kilohertz. All right. So this entire uh, bandwidth, all right, is actually uh, a sign a sign for AM radio transmission. Um, and then. Of course, uh, you cannot own the or or uh, 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 AM radio station cannot have or the entire bandwidth. Uh, this is subdivided into smaller uh, portion for each radio station. All right. So um, once this one is used up, then no more lah. You can no you can no longer uh, have any more uh, radio station uh, being put into here. Uh, unless MCMC expand the bandwidth. Uh, um, but then AM radio is is not not much used now today. I think you cannot receive AM radio also, right? Unless you have very old radio, then you have F, uh, AM. And then for FM, I think uh, most of you listen to FM. All right, FM is here. All right, FM. Um, MCMC actually allocate uh eighty seven point five megahertz to one oh eight megahertz for FM radio. All right. That's why when you tune into your radio station, um, depend on which station you like, uh, yeah? um, but 88.1 or 1 or 94.5 or 95 point whatever. So whatever you tune in here is this, yeah, you actually tune into this frequency. So this, this um, entire bandwidth is dedicated for FM radio transmission. Again, uh, MCMC, divided into different uh, uh, many uh, equal bandwidth uh, channel to be used by different radio stations. Right. Again, when this is full, then you need to apply uh, MCMC will extend uh, the bandwidth if necessary. So to buy, uh, so if you want to transmit any signal or FM signal, or you want to start up your own FM radio station, uh, you need to first, first apply and buy the bandwidth from uh, MCMC. All right, so this is uh, what it is for FM. And then for, let's look at uh, mobile. Mobile is, uh, what color? Uh, green. Okay, mobile actually is used uh, 
or radio, radio communication is everywhere. Um, here, basically the commonly used uh, radio or, or the mobile communication is here. All right, it's, um, I think 700 megahertz and above. All right, so these are the one. Okay, and uh, yeah, TV channel is here. Um, then we also have uh, some block here. Okay, and as far as Malaysia is concerned, the Malaysia uh, mobile frequency, again, this one you can get it from um, this website. Okay, um, for Malaysia, this is the latest info I can get. Um, 2020 June, June the 3rd. Alright. So again, uh, depend on um, a service provider. So look, so we have a lot of player now in Malaysia. Alright, if you are Maxis, then it's green color. If you are DG, it's this orange color. Uh, Unify is this dark orange. Alright, Cellcom is this one. So you can see that uh, there are many um, signal or channel. These are the channel being allocated for um, for mobile communication. All right, I'm surprised we still have 450. 450, I think, is for, if I'm not mistaken, is for 2G, uh, for the kampong one, uh, very ulu place to use. 700 is minimum, basically, is for 2G, 3G, and so on. All right, and then we have um, the LTE. LTE basically use 2.6 gigahertz, which is this one here. All right, you can see um, these are the allocation. Okay, um, this Altel, the company Altel is given 20, this is Mac, I think. We keep a lot of bandwidth to this company. All right, Maxis only have here and here. Yeah. Okay, um, so these are the bandwidth allocation. So you need, uh, this company actually need to buy bandwidth, all right, in order to, uh, uh, to provide mobile service to customer. And, and actually I have an old record, which is this one was in November, 2016. You see 2016, uh, um, this is the one. All right, I think the landscape actually changed already. And uh, I actually, previously uh, I did this, I actually checked on the channel, uh, on China. All right, China mobile phone frequency. This is 2018. I think we, I believe now they are more, uh, more advanced. Uh, 2016, China already started their 5G. So 5G actually you can see is higher frequency. All right, so when we move on to 5G, we are going to use a higher uh, transmitting frequency. All right, so again, you can see 5G, um, the, this, the signal will not be able to travel too long. So that means you need a lot of antenna in between. Okay, so that is for, I heard something on. Uh, what is it? TDD and FDD. Okay. Uh, all right, these are all uh, the communication. Uh, okay, let's. Okay, so where is DDD, FDD? Basically, these are all for different, different, different uh, mode of uh, different mode of uh, communication system. All right, so um, so it depending whether you actually run on I think frequency division or time division. I'm not sure, but uh, again different type of uh, different type of uh, communication system. All right, so basically if I'm mistaken, this one more on time TDD time run on time time division. Uh, this one is in frequency. All right, so you have uplink and downlink. All right, you can say upload and download. Uh, that is your upload and download. Use two different frequency. Okay, um, that this the idea, just a general idea. All right, so I I won't go into the details of it. Um, then okay, let's continue with our lecture. 
Let me see how can we let me get the lecture notes. I have my lecture notes. Okay. Okay, can you see my lecture note screen? Yeah. All right. Um. Okay, what is modulation? So this course is about modulation, demodulation, modulation, demodulation. So you need to know what is modulation by, by now. All right, modulation basically, again, uh, let's repeat, is a process of modifying a carrier signal with the information to make the latest suitable for transmission and compatible with the channel. All right, so we actually use a carrier, it, carrier signal. Basically, carrier signal is a signal that is used to carry information. That's why it's called carrier signal. All right, so uh, how do we make the signal carry information? All right, we actually modify the carrier signal. Yeah. Um, so how, what kind of modification do we do? We can actually modify uh, any of the parameter in the carrier signal. All right. So a carrier signal can have a carrier signal more normally is a sinusoidal signal. Um, okay, let's right. Carrier signal basically is a sinusoidal signal. Let's say I have this. Um, I have B, C, um, Psi, 2 pi, F, T. All right. So what I can change, all right, in order to make the carrier, uh, to make the signal, the carrier signal carry my information, I can change the amplitude. So the message is now in the, I use the, I change the amplitude in order to uh, carry my message. So this is called amplitude modulation. But if I, instead of changing the amplitude, I can also change the frequency. So if I change the frequency of the carrier signal to make the frequency carry my message, then it's called frequency modulation. I can also change the phase. So if I were to change the phase, all right, if I were to change the phase, then, uh, make the face actually represent my message signal then uh, i can have a uh, phase modulation all right so uh if you look at it in terms of block yeah um so what we have is uh we actually fit in our input is the uh, information signal information signal is also called modulating signal all right normally information signal uh are also baseband. They can also be called baseband signal. All right, baseband signal means a signal in its original form. All right, so the baseband signal for voice is somewhere between, uh, if you look at the spectrum, it's between low frequency. So it's somewhere is between here, zero to 5K. So this is my baseband signal. All right, and normally it's low frequency. Okay, as we can see, the low frequency signal of this low frequency cannot transmit, uh, cannot travel uh, too far. All right, and also this is a physical signal. My voice is a physical signal. It's not an electrical signal. It can also go to you. Yeah? Um, so I need to, I need to uh, have a signal that carry this message. So the signal that carry this message normally has high frequency. All right, and I mix these two signal together. All right, and this is called modulation. I mix these two signal, and then the output will be the um, modulated form of the carrier. Modulated meaning this is modified. The carrier signal is modified. All right, the carrier signal is modified by the information signal. That's why the information signal is also called modulating signal. This signal is actually changing. The nature of the carrier signal is going to change some parameter in the carrier signal. Okay, and then the modulated signal is also a high frequency signal. Okay, uh, the frequency is high enough so that it can travel over a certain distance. Yeah. 
So depending on uh, how high it is, as we can see, if you if you use too high frequency, it can only transmit within a short distance. But if you choose a frequency is high but not that high, all right, uh, then you can actually transmit with uh, for a reasonable uh, distance. So that is modulation, yeah, modifying a carrier signal with the information to make sure that the information is suitable for transmission and also compatible with the channel. All right. So as I say, uh, the type of uh, modulation scheme you choose depend on uh, what kind of channel you're going to use. All right. Um, okay. It also depends on what kind of uh, message you have. Uh, right. We're going to do that later. Uh, let's move on. Um, so example of modulation. So here we have a high frequency carrier. So uh, for easy explanation, I use sinusoidal wave here. And also for baseband, our information signal is a low frequency sinusoidal signal again. So when I perform amplitude modulation, I'm actually changing the amplitude of the carrier. You can see the amplitude of the carrier follow the amplitude of the message. All right, so very easy. Amplitude modulation, carrier, the carrier amplitude change. All right, amplitude is changed according to the message. But for frequency modulation, for frequency modulation, the frequency of the carrier is changed according to the message, the amplitude of the message. All right, so you can see here the message has high amplitude. Here the carrier has high frequency. All right, here the message has low amplitude here the frequency of the carrier has is low as well all right so that is frequency modulated signal very straightforward okay um then you may ask uh why need modulation all right why can't i transmit the signal as it is all right i've explained a little bit right why we need to modulate isn't it because it cannot travel longer distance. Let's let's go through uh, some technical uh, analysis and see. So, uh, take for example, um, we want to transmit our voice by telephone wire, all right? By telephone wire, and this is actually the the initial mode of uh, telephone network, yeah, and also um, telephone communication. It it actually use copper wire, so meaning uh when I when I call someone over the phone, all right, and when I talk with the fellow over the phone, right, whatever I say will pick up a mic amplified by the circuit, uh, the telephone, and then transmit, convert to electrical signal and uh, transmit over the telephone wire, reach the receiver's telephone, and then uh, being converted back to, uh, to uh, voice, all right, to physical signal. Uh, use a speaker so you can hear me on the on the other end so this this method of communication actually work well for land base and also short distance all right how long can you lay the telephone wire you can right but within short distance uh, maybe, it, maybe it's just within malaysia let's say you want to to call someone in us are you going to connect a wire from malaysia to us so can it's not that you cannot anything can be done but not as easy um so this is uh this works well if you are short distance meaning local and it's also for land based yeah so this is for wired communication um but then um when 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 we have a uh, mobile communication coming in all right and especially um, cellular communications coming in uh, we actually transmit our signal using electromagnetic wave, right? Your handphone actually send and receive signal through electromagnetic wave. So when this happens, all right, the message that we are going to send, all right, will be converted into electromagnetic wave. Yeah, and then uh, the receiver actually will receive the message in the form of electromagnetic wave as well. Yeah, and uh, so how to how to have an efficient uh, transmission and reception so to do this our antenna 
uh, our antenna length should be in the order of the wavelength. All right. We need to have our antenna built all right, in the order of the wavelength. So let's take a telephone speech. Let's say speech, for example. Speech normally have frequency between uh, 200 to 300 hertz. Uh, this is a low quality speech signal, uh, not high quality one. Uh. So we have a low quality, let's say, uh, speech signal uh, uh, between 200 and 300, uh, 3000 hertz. So how long should we build our antenna? How long should we build our antenna? So if you actually take uh, the, the formula that I show you previously, all right, to calculate the wavelength using the speed of light uh, divided by the frequency of the signal. So for the lowest frequency, which is 200 hertz, all right, uh, this gives us the longest wavelength. The wavelength of the signal is 1,500 1, kilometer. All right. Then the highest frequency of 3,000 hertz in our signal gives us the shortest wavelength, but the uh, shortest also the wavelength is 100 kilometer. How do you fit the antenna of uh, 1,500 kilometer into your mobile phone? That's the question. Impossible, isn't it? Then how <laughs> you have to carry an antenna that is 1,500 kilometer long on your handphone. Nobody wants to do that, right? So uh, that's why we need actually to transmit our signal with a high frequency carrier. All right. So how to do that? Uh, high frequency carrier, how high the frequency should be. All right. So um, the frequency should be at least... If you look at Malaysia itself, actually worldwide also, uh, we actually use a frequency somewhere between uh, 900 to 900 megahertz to 2006 megahertz. This is a commonly used uh, frequency range. Okay, and this uh, number, this frequency, if you plug into the equation, you will find that the wavelength will be about, will be in this range. All right, between 11 to 33 cm. So that means our antenna size yeah, it's about 5 cm, 5 cm to 16 cm. So that can fit in, uh, can fit in our handphone. Uh. All right. So that's why, uh, that's one of the reasons for uh, doing uh, modulation. Okay. So two main reasons for doing modulation. The first one is the... Uh, is of uh, transmission and reception, all right? Is meaning uh, our practical uh, the, the the antenna design on the on the communication device is practical, yeah. So you don't need a very long antenna, a short antenna will do. And uh, the second advantage of modulation is the it allow actually simultaneous transmission of several signal. Okay. So you can see, uh, if you if you want to transmit signal and there is only one channel available, all right. If you are transmitting only one signal at a time, it's not efficient at all, all right. Meaning, if I can only make one phone call, uh, let's say using Maxis line, so other customer, other Maxis customer cannot call no until I until I I I terminate my call. Right, this is not efficient at all, right? I don't want to wait. I want to call. I want to call now. Why should I wait for someone else to terminate his call? All right. So to do that, uh, to allow multi-user or to allow a uh, transmission of uh, multiple signal, uh, we actually perform. We need to perform modulation as well. All right. That will allow um, um, various signal or multiple signal to actually share one channel, and this is called uh, multiplexing. All right, so I'm going to talk about multiplexing next. Okay? Multiplexing may not uh, be, may not sound obvious to some of you. So what is multiplexing? Okay, multiplexing uh, meaning actually you combine several signals together so that we can transmit them over a channel. So combination, the process of combination, there are two ways to combine the signal. All right. So one is called time division multiplexing. The other one is called frequency division multiplexing. Yeah. 
So in time division multiplexing, we actually combine the signal such that the channel transmit information from, uh, from different sources at different time. So take for example here, all right? I have an uh, N number of information here I need to transmit, all right? To N user at the other end, but I have only one channel, all right? But I need to transmit them to them uh, simultaneously. I cannot wait until, uh, I, I cannot wait for one to finish before I transmit the, the information for the next person, all right? So how do I do it? So uh, for time division multiplexing, all right? So we actually send information from source one for a short duration of time, all right? Then uh, we switch to information source number two, all right? So that means uh, all these information sources actually share the same channel, all right? But different time. So we send the first one first for a short duration of time. Then we send the second one. Then we send the third one. Then after we have sent the information from the last one, then we come back to the first one, all right? It is like the use of the classroom. La. Last time when you attend physical classes in uh, campus, right? Let's say we, we have our class at DKW, right? So eight to 10, maybe one course do it. Uh, one, one course is being conducted, all right? Then the sec, uh, between 10 to 12, uh, another, another lecture is being conducted. So we share the same physical resources, but over different time. Yeah. So this is time division multiplexing. And then for frequency division multiplexing, is actually sharing of the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, sharing the bandwidth that is allocated. So now here, let's say we have a bandwidth from here to here. All right. And in fact, uh, each source of information does not require the entire bandwidth. Let's say uh, the source uh, information number one only, only need this bandwidth, all right? Information number two only need this bandwidth. So it does not need the entire uh, bandwidth that is allocated. So what we do, uh, we actually make them share. How do we make them share? By actually using different carrier frequency to carry the information, all right? So information number one, use carrier frequency number F1. Information number two, use carrier frequency F2. And information number N now use carrier frequency N. All right. So we transmit different information using different frequencies, different carrier frequencies. All right. And then we combine them together. All right. And then uh, you can see that they will not overlap in the frequency spectrum. So we actually share is actually share the uh, share the channel in that manner, all right? Um, as they are transmitted using different frequency. Okay, so as far as hardware is concerned, all right. So uh, you can see that information number one go through modulation circuit number one. So this will actually use carrier frequency F one, all right. And then information number two here use uh, F2, so this is F1, this is F2, and this is Fn, all right? And then we combine the signal. Um, we can send the signal as it is, or if you want to further modulate, you can, all right? You can further do further modulation. And then at the receiver, all right, at the receiver, we demodulate it. Uh, because we have modulation here, we have to demodulation, do perform demodulation here as well. Um, then this will give us the uh, the signal with the F1, this is F2, this is Fn. All right, so we have this signal. So how to recover this signal? We use band pass filter. All right, band pass filter number one, which is this one here. I want to recover this signal, right? So uh, this is my band pass filter number one. All right, so that will recover this signal. And then I demodulate it. I recover, I need to recover this. So I have, I just want to take this part of a, a spectrum, the spectrum out of the entire one. So I use a bandpass filter to recover this signal. And then I demodulate it. Because here I modulate, here I need to demodulate. 
All right, that will give us, uh, that will recover this baseband signal. And then same thing for this signal, I use a different band pass filter. All right, you can see the band pass filter are different because the cutoff frequency and the center frequency are different, right? Yeah, so I, I, I can be sure that I will recover this signal uh, correctly. So same thing, I have band pass filter number two here. So to recover this last one, I need a different band pass filter. All right, so I recover here, I demodulate here, then I get my signal back. All right. So uh, in, in short, time division multiplexing, all right, allow the sharing of uh, the channel, all right, um, by combining the signal um, in different time. Okay, the signal is being tra transmitted at different time. So uh, this is time division multiplexing. For frequency division multiplexing, uh, the sharing is on the um, electromagnetic spectrum, but uh, the signal now are modulated um, using different carrier. The signal actually has different carrier. All right. And this carrier, you must make sure they don't overlap. Uh. So if they don't overlap, then we can easily recover it later on at the receiver using band pass filter. Okay, so the so that is the a brief some some brief explanation of multiplexing. All right, when we go into the relevant chapter, I will talk a bit more again on this uh, multiplexing. So now, when do we do time division multiplexing? When do we do frequency division multiplexing? Uh, again, I will explain later. So the next process I want to talk about is uh, demodulation, right? I talk about modulation where we actually modify the carrier signal so that it carry the information. Now demodulation basically is to recover the information. All right. Just now uh, we add the we add the transmitter, we actually modify the signal, right? The signal is already modified. Now it goes through the channel. All right, so now at the receiver, what do we do? All right, receiver, basically, we need to undo uh, undo or recover. The word is recover. All right, so this is the message. All right, we actually modify here in the transmitter or the modulation. This is the modulation process. So at the receiver, we actually recover it. So to recover it, we need to perform the uh, demodulation process. All right, so that we get our message. Okay, so um, so just now at the modulation, we actually have the um, modulated carrier. All right, so this is a modulated carrier that actually um, carry our information across the channel. So now we actually need to recover our information from this modulated carrier here that we receive. All right. So normally the modulated signal or the modulated carrier has high frequency. All right, so we feed in into the demodulation block. So demodulation block will actually recover our baseband signal for us or the original information signal for us. Okay, again from high frequency, go to low frequency. So that is demodulation. Okay. Um, all right, let's do a comparison between baseband and uh, carrier communication. Okay, baseband communication, as the name suggests, baseband, all right, uh, no modulation is being done. All right, we send the signal as it is. All right, we send the signal as it is. So it can be analog signal, it can be digital signal. Send the signal as it is. So uh, this kind of signal, the signal normally occupy the low frequency spectrum. All right. So that's why we have uh, power at low frequency only. And uh, if you use baseband communication, then your channel has to be a wired channel. All right, you cannot send the signal through radio link. Radio link meaning you use electromagnetic wave, All right? So you send the signal through uh, a wired link. Wired link can be wire, can be fiber, uh, cable, can be optical fiber as well, all right? So again, because uh, if you want to transmit signal, um, multiple signal over wired medium, all right, so you only have one physical channel. So uh, 
to send more signals, you have to use time division multiplexing. All right, you only have one physical wire. So how to share the wire? That means you have to transmit different signal at different time. All right, so that means uh, we use time division multiplexing. And this is commonly used uh, in local telephone communication, short distance, uh, all the short distance communication uh, basically, because we don't really want to lay wires over long distance, uh, unless, unless optical fiber, yeah. Okay, so, um, so because signal are being multiplied, uh, are being multiplexed, um, over optical fiber or any wire, there is also, there, that, that means there is a limited number of signal that you can transmit uh, over the optical fiber at a time, isn't it? All right. Uh, I'm not sure whether you encounter that even you, even though you use optical fiber also sometimes uh, you may you may suffer from lag as well. All right. Uh, that's why the, the service provider also guarantee you uh, and then when they say they give you uh what do they say now uh, they give you they say 500 megabits per second okay they say they give you 500 megabits per second but um it may not be 500 megabits per second all the time all right because uh, they actually share the fiber if i'm not mistaken i asked them before i think uh 10 customer 10 household per, per fiber home base uh, right so again, uh, if 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 your if, again that means you you are you also have limit the bandwidth is up to uh ten oh no five hundred megabits per second, all right five hundred megabits per second. So that means uh let's say is you have a five hundred megabits per second bit per second package, all right. They 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 guarantee this is the maximum you can go lower one no? all right they can go lower one depend on the network condition all right um okay again this is because of uh, time division multiplexing we are actually sharing the fiber with other people as well we are not we are not having the entire except for your home la, from home to the switch box outside is, is your own fiber but after that it's a sharing already Okay, so they actually use time division multiplexing. The same thing here, like you also use multiple devices at home, right? So again, your home fiber also is actually shared. The information on your home fiber is also is time division multiplex, um, querying different signal from different devices. Okay, um, so that's why sometimes uh, if you have um, too many people playing games at home at the same time, you will suffer lag as well. Uh, because uh, more people sharing, then uh, meaning you have uh, less bandwidth. Okay, um, for carrier communication, carrier communication uh, meaning uh, we actually um, perform modulation. Okay, to use a carrier signal to carry our information. and. Um, so whenever we use a carrier, the carrier signal normally has high frequency. So therefore, uh, and then because we use carrier, we can use carrier of different frequency of multiple different frequencies. So that means you can use the entire spectrum that is available to us. All right. Um, then uh, what else? So for carrier communication, carrier communication applies only when you want to transmit signal uh, through radio link. All right, wireless. Okay, so because you are using the uh, carrier um, to carry information for you and you can use a uh, different frequency for your carrier. So therefore, uh, frequency division multiplexing is normally used for carrier communication. All right, so example of carrier communications uh, are normally, it can be long distance, it can be short distance. All right, so it can be your phone, all right, the, the radio link for your phone, uh, the Wi-Fi signal at home there, and also the Bluetooth from your device to your earphone if you're using a Bluetooth headphone, or it can be to speaker if you're using a Bluetooth that is at, uh, uh, using speaker that actually use Bluetooth uh, technology. 
Okay, so whenever you go wireless, you need carrier. Yeah. Any question? Ah? Very quiet. Leh. I don't know whether I'm talking to myself or what. Okay. No question, I suppose. Your question, you just on your mind and uh, speak up. Huh? All right. So the modulation schemes that we are going to study. All right. We won't go very deep or uh, into very advanced modulation scheme. We just uh, cover the basic. All right. So for basic, the analog will be analog mod uh, communication will be amplitude modulation, uh, frequency modulation, uh, phase modulation. I won't actually cover it. It's not part of the syllabus. But I will go into the pulse modulation. All right, pulse modulation basically is a transition into um, digital. And uh, for digital modulation technique, I will cover uh, amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, phase shift keying, as well as uh, pulse code modulation. All right, so pulse code modulation, I believe you have learned before. So I'll just quickly go through it. So these are the few modulation schemes that we are going to learn in this course. Uh, and then hopefully by the end of the course, uh, you'll be able to apply uh, the relevant one to your assignment. Okay, lastly, let's quickly go through the milestone. Huh? Okay, I know it's one o'clock. You have class? Huh? Do you have other class now? Yes, no? Hello? No class? Then I finish on why it's only the last two slides. Basically, the milestone in uh, communication slide show you the progress. All right, the progress of a communication system. And uh, so um, starting from year, wow, this is 19th century, the early 19th century, um, the first form of communication is Morse code. You know Morse code, right? You don't know? If you don't know, uh, that means you haven't uh, read or watched uh, any detective movie. All right, Morse code basically was uh, the first form of uh, communication used. Um, that was in the early 19th century. And um, so what else? Then uh, Maxwell, the very, very, very well-known Maxwell. Uh, formulated the electromagnetic wave theory, your Maxwell equation number one, equation number two, three, and four. <laughs> All right, so uh, he actually formulated the electromagnetic wave theory. Mm, then the first telephone was invented in 1876, then the hertz, ah, the, the unit for our frequency uh, quantity is hertz. So this is uh, to pay tribute to this guy, uh, hertz actually demonstrated the physical evidence of electromagnetic wave. Um, then the first long distance radio telegraph, yeah, somewhere in the 1900, all right. Then uh, the first radio broadcast actually started in early 1900s, all right. Then move on to oh, television, television, the first television, black and white television in England and US, early 1900 as well. But for Malaysia, it's much later. Yeah. Then, um, next one, the important one, oh, Nyquist. The Nyquist theory, Nyquist sampling theorem. Uh, this guy actually proposed the sampling theorem early in early 1900, right, which is still useful up to today. Uh, radio and microwave system was uh, again first um, developed in 1945 and 45, 1945 and 47. All right, if you read history, this is a time, uh, Second World War time, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, this system uh, was first developed for military use. All right, military use. So a lot of communi a lot of development in communication system are actually first uh, applied or used for military. All right. So they were developed for military use initially. And... Uh, 1960 something satellite communication all right and uh, then the first uh, fiber he, this guy actually um, did some experiment and find that the optical fiber can be used for the fiber can be used for optical communication all right um 
So da, 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 moving on, moving on, uh, 1995. Um, were you born now? 1995? Not yet, right? <laughs> this is when the 2G network started. All right, and then uh, you can see uh, 1995, 2001, 3G network uh, within the span of five years. Then uh, 10 years, we moved into 4G. Um, then from 4G, we moved into, it's 4G LTE, uh, LTE, right? Then we move into 5G. So I expect to move into 5G uh, sometime within this decade, uh, right? So that is the important milestone in communication system. So from here, I actually finished, I believe I finished chapter one already. Yep. Okay. Any questions before we end our class? I don't know how many of you are still with me. So quiet. <laughs> All right, very good. So if no question, then we end the class here. Uh yeah, good. Wong Wong Chun Yi share some cellular network example. Yeah. Okay, you can always read more and this is just uh, the purpose of this chapter is just to give you an overall appreciation of the communication system, that's all. All right, if you want to know more, you can always read up on your own, yeah? And, uh, and uh, for next chapter, I will talk a bit, we'll, we'll go through some revision on your signal processing, yeah? Then before we go into the actual um, study itself. Because uh, communication system basically, is, as you can see, is, is more on the modification of signal. All right, how we modify a signal from, um, from the baseband to a form that is suitable for, modi for communication. Then we send it over. Then the receiver, how he modify. All right, how the receiver actually modify the, the signal that you receive and uh, into its original form. Okay, so it's a lot of signal processing involved there. Okay, so let's end the class today. Yeah?